Welcome everyone. In this video we will continue the discussion of the ADS1256 and in this video I'm going to show you uh, some things about the continuous acquisition. So previously I showed you how to read and write the registers. So for example how to see the status of some certain registers. For example we can see what is the uh, sampling rate, what input is uh, enabled and so on and so on and we can also change these settings by writing certain registers and uh, I also showed you in a video that uh, we can obtain the conversion value from the AD converter and uh, in that video I think the most important thing is that I showed you how this works step by step and how to build up the 24-bit uh, uh, number by stepping out 8 bits at the at at a time, and how to reconstruct the 24-bit number from uh, this uh, three times uh, eight bits, and also how to convert this uh, bit value into a voltage value. So in this video. Uh, we will continue uh, based on the previous videos and uh, we will do some continuous reading and this can be done in two ways basically one is that we want to read multiple inputs almost at the same time so we can uh, cycle through these certain inputs that we have to select and we will use the R data uh, as the command to initiate the conversion and uh, there is another possible way that uh, we use the rdataC command and we read one single uh, input continuously and uh, by doing so we can reach uh, quite high uh, acquisition rates so I will show you these two different uh, things uh, and at the end of the video I will show you this in practice so I will do some measurement. So I put some relevant information on the left side uh, which is from the datasheet and I put the source code on the right side and this is not the full source code but uh, the main part of the function which takes care of the basically the algorithm which is uh, defined on the left hand side. So now we are talking about the first issue here. So we cycle to certain inputs and we retrieve the data using the rdata command. And uh, I showed you this in a previous uh, video. So please check it. So uh, let's start with the step one here. So it says that when the data ready goes low, indicating that data is ready for retrieval, update the multiplexer register MUX using the WREG uh, command. And what we have to do here is that when we start our AD converter for the first time, uh, we initialize it. And by doing so, we usually say that we select a def default input. So let's say we define, uh, let, let's uh, follow the example here. So we define uh, this kind of uh, input, which is defined here as well on this uh, chart. So which says that the positive input is A in zero and the negative input is A in uh, one, which is basically a differential uh, input. So that is already selected. And now we go with the step one, which says that when uh, this guy goes low, so the data already goes low, uh, we select the next uh, input. So which will come after we read uh, this, uh, this kind of input here. So it says that, all right, let's uh, select the first, what we want here. And uh, I follow uh, basically the same in my code. Uh, so we started it, so this function is initialized. We uh, step in in this while loop. So until some certain thing happens, uh, which here is the receival of this 
character through the serial port, we will stay inside this while loop. So uh, we will uh, loop through four inputs, the four different differential inputs. And um, let's say we also outside this uh, function, we already selected uh, this one, which is selected here. So that is selected. And then uh, the chart say, says that, okay, select the next one. So here we do that. Uh, so we select the, the next one in the case one. So when the uh, loop here or the cycle here is at uh, one, we select this and we write it to the uh, register. So that happens. And uh, after that, of course, we step out from this. So by uh, running and or performing the break and we end up at the step two. So what does step two uh, say? Restart the conversion process by issuing a sync command. So uh, we start the SPI communication, of course, and we restart with the sync. So sync is here and uh, we have to wait uh, T11 it says here so make sure to follow timing specification t11 between comments so we follow that here wait and uh, that is uh, 3.125 uh, uh, microseconds and you always have to round up so even though this uh, according to the rules in the mathematics should be three if you round it because you have to round it down but uh, this should be rounded up to the next integer always uh, if even if it is 0 0.05 uh, sorry 3.05 uh, that should be 4 uh, at least this is what I uh, experienced and uh, since you cannot uh, give floating numbers in this uh, argument uh, you have to give the closest uh, integer which is larger than the calculated value so t11 should be uh, 3.125 if you just calculate it but uh, it should be uh, rounded up to the next integer. So that should be four. So we wait four and it says that followed by a wake up command. So we do this. So I just abbreviate it, W up. That's done. So step one done, step two done. What do we have to do? So read the data from the previous conversion using the R data. So first of all, it says previous conversion. So that's where we chose this guy here. And uh, we are done with this. We are done with this. And now uh, we are doing this. So we read from the previous. So this is the R data here. And then of course we have to wait. Uh, this is uh, the other delay T6. And I discussed this in the previous video. So again, please go back and check it or check the uh, data sheet of this uh, ADS uh, converter. So uh, we have to make sure that the register data is zero always before we start to receive our data, because otherwise you will be mixing the previous data with the new data. And that's not good. So you want to avoid this because let's say this is the second conversion and this is not zero before the conversion, then uh, you will already have something in this uh, register data when you move out and uh, uh, combine it by an OR uh, logic. And uh, that's not good because then you combine it and then you carry your error uh, from the first step through the other steps and you mess up your wall number. So always make sure that the register data or whatever your uh, variable which will store the number is zero before you start to read out the uh, numbers. So uh, we issued the R data command and uh, we waited. We made, made sure that uh, this is zero and we start to step out. And again, previous video. So after uh, the reading uh, occurred, uh, we have our data. So we have our data and that part, this part here is D out. So that happens basically here. And uh, we just print it. So we print it and we print a tab. Why? So 
because let's say we have the first channel which is the first uh, iteration of the loop and then we put a tab here and then uh, we will continue and uh, now I, I go on so we, we do the printing and just uh, close down the communication and uh, we move to the next so we increase uh, the number here so now it's 2 so go to the uh, case 2 which is this register here so now we write this exactly this guy here and then uh, we do the sync and the wake up again and then we issue the R data again and then we read out the register this guy which was defined previously so this and uh, we print it again so this will be the channel 2 and tab and then we go to the 3 and the tab and we go to the 4 and the tab uh, sorry we go to the 4 uh, yes and uh, we do a tab here but uh, then uh, we are at the end of this loop so what happens is that we step out from the loop and we do a line break as well so then when this loop restarts from 1 the next uh, channel 1 value will be printed here and then uh, the channel 2 will be printed here and so on and so on and we do a new line and so on and so on and we print so this makes sure that until you are in the for cycle or for loop uh, you are printing the columns within one line and when you uh, leave the for loop then you jump to the next uh, line here and you continue until you get it uh, interrupted so then uh, here when the data ready uh, goes low again repeat the cycle and so on and so on so again we will wait for the data ready and uh, we will do the things so the uh, take home message from this is that when you start this uh, function here or method uh, the first thing that you have to remember that the first uh, conversion value which comes out from this regardless what you choose here will be uh, the register that we chose uh, before uh, this uh, wall function so I chose uh, this input somewhere outside uh, this uh, wall thing and we will read that first and then we will read the next one and so on and so on so here actually you can see that I start these cases with the register 2 or uh, sorry the channel 2 and then I will go uh, until channel 1 so my uh, order of channels is uh, 2, 3, 4, 1 because 1 is actually somewhere here uh, defined outside so then we read this uh, first and then after one for loop is uh, done we will uh, go and read the next line and, and so on and so on but uh, this was relatively easy and I will show you that uh, this works if you implement uh, the instructions defined here uh, like this defined here so we solved the first issue and now let's see how we can solve the second issue so we are in the second uh, issue or we try to uh, address the second issue and uh, on the left hand side you can see the uh, diagrams related to this uh, problem I put here the wall uh, function and the function says that uh, we read a single channel continuously so this is uh, defined somewhere else so we have to make sure that uh, using uh, the write register uh, command we write the mux uh, register and choose an input so we are done with that and uh, we don't care anymore so now what we have to do is uh, of course we have to start the SPI uh, communication and then we start to wait for the data ready and then let's go to the uh, command sequence so uh, here we have to wait for the data ready and then 
uh, when that happens, uh, we have to send the rdataC command. So after this happens, we immediately go to the next uh, step, and that is basically to issue the rdataC command. And then we have to wait t6. So we wait for the t6, and uh, again we have to round up for the to the next integer. So this becomes uh, seven microseconds. So we wait seven microseconds, and now, uh, as the data sheet uh, says, that after we issue the R data C, we only have to uh, care about the data ready, as well as the common sequence uh, shows here, but. After this, we can uh, define a while loop, so until we don't send some character, which in my case is a character S or letter S, uh, we will stay within this loop, so we stay inside this. And there is only one thing that we have to do, is um, we have to uh, make sure that this register data is zero. I explained why, like a few minutes ago. And then uh, we can uh, we have to wait for the data ready. Actually, maybe this can be moved at the end of this uh, while loop, but uh, this doesn't interfere with our uh, command sequence. So we wait for the data ready, and we just uh, read out the data as we defined it. And here you have to make sure that uh, previously we uh, wrote. Uh, 0x, 0f, but actually now we have to wait, uh, have to write zeros uh, in order to get the proper data because otherwise, if you write uh, 0x, 0f, uh, then you will get zeros all the time. So here we change the argument of the SPI transfer to 0, and that's all. So we read out the data and then we print the register data uh, out. And uh, of course we stay within this loop, so we are here now, we printed out the data and uh, again we go back to the beginning, we make this uh, zero to be ready to receive the new data and we wait for the data ready. So after the conversion, uh, data ready went back up, so we wait until it goes down again. So there, and uh, we start to read again. So we read out again, and uh, we read out, data already goes back, and of course this continues, and then we wait again until it goes down, so we will have our 24 bits, and and so on and so on. So it's, it's, it's quite easy. And until we send the S, uh, we can read out everything. Uh, only thing that you have to make sure that after this uh, thing, uh, it's not enough to just uh, step out from this loop, but uh, you also have to issue S data C. So you stop receiving uh, the data continuously. Uh, Basically, this is all, and I also noticed maybe my code is wrong somewhere, but uh, I have to reset uh, the ADS in order to have the voltage values properly after st restarting uh, this kind of acquisition. So, for example, I run this for a while, I get the proper values, I stop it, and uh, I stop it by this command and I restart this, then I will not receive the proper values. So after S uh, data C, I uh, suggest you to issue a res reset, and then you can go back to this. So uh, what I would do that I would make a function which runs after you run the S data C, and uh, it will also do a reset and uh, after you reset, you can also uh, write your default values for the data rate, input, and so on and so on. So this is more simple than the previous one, because we don't care about uh, the cycling. We just select one input outside this uh, loop, 
or outside this function and uh, we just make sure that uh, we send the uh, rdataC command here and uh, then we make sure that we receive the data and that's all. So now I'm going to show you some examples like practical examples. So I just receive data from a circuit by using two different uh, measurement modes. One will be this one when I read a single input continuously and the other is when I cycle through the four uh, differential inputs. So this is my software. Uh, I made it uh, specifically for this uh, microcontroller and uh, AD converter so I can uh, have a better control and a more comfortable control over these uh, circuits, these circuits. So just select it, so we connect. And uh, first uh, let's uh, go through the first issue. So we choose differential mode and uh, I choose all the channels. And then let's say the data rate should be 50. So I basically here just uh, pre-programmed all the uh, speeds and whenever I click on one it will automatically send the write register command and uh, write the uh, register the MUX no sorry the data rate register and write the uh, corresponding speed and uh, when you select the speed and you select the inputs you always have to keep in mind that uh, you have to divide the data rate with the number of channels you are reading so you you should keep in mind that this uh, chip is capable of uh, 30,000 samples per second if you read one single channel. If you read uh, two channels then uh, the speed drops down to 15,000 and of course it will be even slower uh, due to the uh, processing. So you do some things with the uh, Arduino and that will show uh, slow down uh, the data acquisition rate more. So we selected the, the inputs, we selected the data rate and we don't care about anything else so we can start. And as you can see uh, we have four different voltages so I just uh, built uh, a resistor ladder or voltage divider uh, from several resistors and you can see the voltages here. The first uh, step in this uh, voltage divider is a potentiometer so if I start to turn it then all these voltages will change so let's do that now. So I just uh, rotate it a little bit and you can see it now that uh, the voltage is higher but we are still in the millivolt uh, range and uh, these are real voltages so uh, I measured it with a multimeter so these are uh, legit uh, measurement values so let's increase it further so let's go to the maximum that should be like 4.7 because there is a small uh, voltage drop because I use the 5 volt output of the Arduino for this uh, voltage divider and I also use it for the uh, ADS so of course it will not provide the 5 volt perfectly so let's go to 4.7 or something so yeah there we are the channel 1 is the first step of the voltage divider so of course uh, that's the input of the voltage divider so we will not have any drop and then the first drop is 4 volt and the second is 3.3 .3 and then 2.6 and now you can see that uh, the data is almost instantaneous or let's say because now I'm moving it up and down and you can see that I'm uh, quite nicely drawing everything so this is fine and uh, it, it works well so this is very good so I'm reading four channels simultaneously and I'm uh, plotting all the data real time so this is what happens here and uh, you can see that there is no problem with the reading uh, using the R data. So okay, we are done with this. You can see that we made a very nice uh, chart here. 
So let's uh, stop and uh, let's demonstrate the second uh, thing. So after finishing with this uh, cycling uh, and measuring four channels at the same time, uh, now we will use the R data C and uh, for that I made this scope mode and basically what happens here is that we only measure the first channel which is the differential input of the A in 0 and A in 1 uh, pins and uh, what I also do here is that on the X axis after a certain number of data points I will start to move out uh, the data uh, from the first point whenever a new data comes in so the chart will be more or less continuous so here uh, let me change the sample sampling rate to 100 samples per second and let me just uh, start the measurement so we are at uh, 700 something millivolts and you can see that uh, there is a small fluctuation in the voltage and uh, now everything is piling up and now you can see that uh, I move out uh, here so this is very good because it's uh, it keeps only a certain amount of points uh, on the visual part so for example if you have some rapidly changing uh, signal then maybe this can be a bit more comfortable to read and now let me move the potentiometer so now I just barely touching it but uh, you can see that it follows so this is very nice because now I just move it and you can see that it is continuously changing So now let's go to the maximum let's go back so you can see that this is now I'm moving it up and down and it's uh, it's react it is reacting very quickly so I can even draw something so this is basically a real-time acquisition and as you can see it works uh, smoothly so it's it's very nice and we have enough data so it's uh, quite smooth and you can see it's uh, quite stable because if I stop moving then uh, only the third digit uh, of this voltage is moving so it's relatively fine you can see now once enough data is leaving this uh, screen or this part of the screen the y-axis will be rescaled automatically so now we can see the data in a more detailed way so you can see that uh, the data is basically between 2.9 and 2.89 uh, watts so this is when I use the R data C and uh, you can see that it is providing uh, correct numbers so these are the same if I would measure them by a a multimeter and uh, it's continuously uh, showing the numbers so it's very smooth so yeah basically this is the essence of this tutorial to show you two different kind of uh, data acquisition and uh, show you how to implement it in Arduino and uh, as a proof uh, you can see that it works so here you can see the data and this is not uh, cheating or something so now I move the potentiometer and uh, we have all the numbers changing and we have all the voltages and uh, you can use this for basically anything where you need to measure uh, voltage with high resolution so I hope that uh, this was helpful uh, for me it took a lot of time to find uh, everything so I wanted to summarize so I hope that uh, this will help you whenever you find this video and I hope you learned something and uh, see you in the next video